Good morning, happy fall. I wanted to put a video together to show our new bed. I finally finished putting it together after uh, a month of us just sleeping on our camp pads and then another two months of just our mattress on the floor. We finally have a bed and it's so nice. <laughs> Uh, it's, you know, it's the little things, it's the luxuries. Um, we're pretty excited about it. So this was a fun little, you know, DIY IKEA hack that I feel pretty good about. I did a lot of bed shopping online and there wasn't a lot that I was just in love with for the prices that they were. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll just build one because I knew I wanted a solid wood, wood bed frame. I was looking at the prices of wood and I was looking at different plans, different design plans, and I just wasn't in love with anything. So I decided to look back at Ikea. I've always had Ikea beds my entire adulthood in all of my apartments, and I've been very impressed with the quality of the beds. We bought the Queen Ivor bed frame, and we transformed it into a bed that I now love. I'm pretty excited about it. I feel like this is a really affordable project. Um, I think in total it was maybe uh, with the bed and the materials. I think it was $240, which is a steal when you think of some of the other bed frames on the market that I think it now looks like. I'll show them here on the screen, but there were quite a few bed frames over the $1,000 mark that I think look like this, and we just did not want to spend that money on this bed. We're pretty excited about it, and let's get into it. The bed that we initially bought was the Ivor Queen. It's just raw pine. We decided to stain it. First things first, I set up and prepped my workspace. I just did this in our living room. At the time, we didn't have our chairs, so it was nice and open, and I knew I needed to do multiple layers of stain and poly, so that way I didn't have to do it outside and worry about dust or leaves getting into the paint or stain. After I prepped my space, I put two coats of stain on, and I used Ipswich Pine from Mint Wax. It's a warm stain, it leans a little red and pink. It's pretty vibrant if it's just used alone. So I knew I was going to put a pickled oak on top. I wanted to bring out the depth and the warmth of the wood grain before I toned it down. If I had just used the pickled oak on top of it without staining a darker color, then it would get pretty washed out and actually look more like a white wood. After I did two coats of the Ipswich Pine, I then did two coats of Pickled Oak by Min Wax. This is a very white stain. It's um, not quite as white as their whitewash stain, but what I love is it kind of weathers the wood when you do it over top of a different stain. It makes it feel like that bleached oak tone that everybody absolutely loves right now, and it looks so pretty and really washed down. I did two coats of that, and you can see it still keeps some of the pink tones coming underneath, but it's not as saturated. After I waited for that stain to dry, I then did two coats of Wipe On Poly. I really like this Wipe On Poly because when you use a rag to wipe it on, you really do not have to worry about having too much excess and having brush strokes. I just think it provides a really really pretty finish. The next step of the project was to create the headboard using rattan. I picked out a really pretty simple woven cane slash rattan. I ended up getting this from an Etsy seller and they were so awesome to work with. It came like two weeks before it said it would and um, I'm really happy with this product. So I have them linked below if you're looking for some rattan or cane. They were amazing to work with. I cut my piece to size, just using regular kitchen shears. I soaked the piece of rattan in the bathtub for about 30 minutes. And the reason I did this was to allow the piece to be a bit more moldable as I'm working with it, and then for it to dry in a really taut, clean finish after it was applied to the headboard. 
For the top part of the headboard, I ended up doing a different technique than I did on the sides. I think it looks really nice in the end, but I don't think this was the most effective. There was one headboard that I saw that had this technique. I think it was like a $2,000 headboard, and I cannot find it now. Um, but it was absolutely beautiful and it had individual strands wrapped around the wood. So I was trying to go for that and it ended up being much harder to work with than keeping the strands woven together. After I figured out the length of the strands that needed to wrap around to the back, I cut out the pieces and then started staple gunning. I also used different clamps to hold the whole piece in place as best as I could while I was working. I used my staple gun to get the pieces in and the setting I had on my staple gun wasn't going in very deep so I ended up having to hammer the pieces in and that seemed to work just fine. I did the same thing on the sides and the bottom of the headboard but this time kept the strands woven together and this made it so much easier to work with. And I'm glad I changed the style halfway through the project because I do not think it would have been as sturdy had I done the individual strands all around. After I finished using the staple gun and hammering in the staples, I then realized that the back needed a little bit of protection. It felt like it was going to scratch the wall and um, definitely just didn't look as clean. I just went uh, and grabbed a roll of masking tape and just cleaned up all of the edges. This isn't the fanciest technique. You know, I, I actually thought it would be really nice to use like a fabric webbing, but in the end I realized, you know, this is going against my wall. This is just to protect the staples from scratching the wall if we ever move the bed. So I just went with masking tape. I figured I could always come back later and do something different. And in our room, you never see the back of the bed. The next step was super simple. <laughs> it was just building the IKEA bed using the IKEA instructions. This bed was probably one of my least favorite IKEA pieces to build and put together. Part of it, I think, was because I was doing it by myself, and you know, they always recommend having two people building their beds. But I used different props around our room to hold things up, and I, you know, made it work. And we ended up getting the slats in and getting the mattress on and it was just so nice to be off the floor. That is our little bed IKEA hack makeover. You know, this one was super simple and just a fun project to do. It was satisfying to just feel like we actually could bring something to completion since we are working on so many different areas of the house all at once. It was just really nice to do a project, finish something, put it together, and now be using it every single day. Hope you guys took something away, maybe inspired you to look at your old IKEA pieces or look at a new IKEA piece and see how you can make it fit your style or make it feel a little bit more expensive than what you pay for. But in the end, um, we're super excited about it and happy to have a bed, feeling grateful to have a bed. And we'll see you guys next week.